welcome to the sessions on transmission and distribution under the ages of VTU e Sectiona program. So in my last session, we had discussed about the design of the string insulators and we have to decide how many insulators to use, what is the voltage across them and how to calculate it. So in this session, we will see those aspects. So we will look at the potential distribution and the self capacitance, mutual capacitance and string efficiency. So from a manufacturing perspective, I told you we use identical strings. So if a disc is damaged, you can easily replace it with another disc. So that's the idea of using identical discs. Now, is there some price we pay because of this? Let's just see that. So let's define the capacitance C as the capacitance of each unit, each disc. Now, the voltage across each disc would be V by N where V is the total voltage across all the discs. But is this the case or is it something different? Let's just find out. Now each disc has a metal fitting and therefore there will be a capacitance between the metal fitting and the ground, grounded tower. So this capacitance is denoted by let us say C1. So if you want to see from a circuit viewpoint what it is, it would be like this. Just see here, this would be, so I have discs, I have discs and I have metallic links, I have metallic links. So this is the grounded tower, the grounded tower and this is the conductor. So the conductor will pass through that, through the suspended, suspended insulator. So. Now you see what are the two parameters we discussed. So C is the capacitance of each unit. So I have C here, here, here. I am considering three units for simplicity. Okay. And what is C1? Between the first disc metallic point and the ground, the grounded tower. And here again the capacitance between the second disc point and the grounded tower. So all these are also C1 because the discs are identical. The design is identical. So this is the circuit equivalent. This is the circuit equivalent, the network equivalent of this. So let us denote the voltages by V1, V2, V3. The voltage between each of the disks as V1, V2 and V3. Clear? Now this, the first disk is the one closest to the cross arm where it is connected to the tower. And the last disc is closest to the conductor. I mean, just for agreeing on some nomenclature. That's all. Okay. So, let the voltage across the first disc, disc be V1, the middle disc V2 and the last disc V3. Clear? So, now you have the circuit. Circuit here. So, let us define one more parameter, M. This is the ratio of shunt capacitance to mutual capacitance C1 by C. So from this, this is a definition. It's not a derived quantity. It's a definition. I define a parameter M as this ratio. So from this C1 is equal to C times M. C1 is equal to C times M. So due to this shunt capacitance, what happens? The current through the disks will be different and therefore the voltage across each of the disks will be different. Let us see how. Just see here. The voltage across this capacitor I1, this one, would be V1 divided by the capacitor reactance. Capacitor reactance is C omega, 1 by C omega. 1 by C omega is the capacitive reactance. So the current through C would be V1 divided by 1 by C omega that is V1 into C omega. 
that would be the current through this capacitor c okay now what would be the current through this the first capacitance here c1 the first shunt capacitance so the voltage across this is v1 because this point is at v1 so this the voltage across this capacitor will be v1 so the current through this will be c1 into omega c1 sorry I, the current i1 will be v1 into omega c1 that is this current this is lower case i this is upper case i okay so we start the derivation from here right now what will be the current through this capacitor see the voltage across that is v2 so the current through this would be v2 c omega v2 c omega similarly this would be v3 c omega this section here this i3 now what's the current here through this capacitor the second c1 so if you see the voltage across this this point q and the ground would be v1 plus v2 so the second capacitor here this the voltage across this would be v1 plus v2 so the current through this would be v1 plus v2 into omega c1 okay and similarly the voltage through the last capacitor at point r this would be v1 plus v2 plus v3 into omega c1 so you see though the disks are identical because of this shunt currents flowing through the shunt capacitance the current through all of them is not the same the current through all the disks is not the same now at each node you can apply kirchhoff's law so this current i2 would be i1 plus the small i1 similarly i3 would be i2 plus small i2 got it so Again, as I said, it would be good if you take a pen and a paper and work it out along with me. So now let's simple now that we know the circuit viewpoint, let's quickly write the equations. So I have I2 is equal to I1 plus I1. So you can see here this lowercase I1 is through the, the current through the shunt capacitance. In the first disk, uppermost disk. And capital I1, uppercase I1 is the current through the mutual capacitance of the first disk. So I2 is V2 omega C. See here. I2 is V2 into C omega. And I1 is V1 into omega C. And small I1, you see here, this one, this current is V1 into omega C1. V1 into omega C1. So, I, I have this equation. So, this is nothing but KCL. This is Kirchhoff's law at that particular node. So, simplifying, cancelling all the omegas, I get V2 is equal to important. So, you see a V2 is not equal to V1. So, the voltage is not same across all the disks even though the disk is identical. Clear? Fine. Now, let us move on to the next node here at Q what happens I3 is equal to I2 plus I2. Let me write that. So I3 is I2 plus I2 and this I3 is nothing but V3 into omega C. See here this current I3 the voltage across this capacitor is V3. So this current I3 would be V3 into omega C. Okay. And I2, I already have the expression for I2 is I1 plus I1, that is this. Okay, I2. And small I2, that is the current through this is V1 plus V2 into omega C1. I substitute for the currents and then simplify. I get V3 is, so you cancel out all the omegas, etc. And you get V3 is V1 into 1 plus 3M plus M squared. So V3 is the voltage across the disk which is closest to the conductor. And V1 is the voltage across the disk which is closest to the tower, the cross arm of the tower. So now you see I have taken the case of three disks. So the voltages are not the same. I have V1, V2, V3. The voltages are different. So you don't have any uniform distribution of the 
voltages. So voltage across the first disc, across the second disc, across the third disc. So if you have many discs, many discs, so Vn plus 1 will be equal to Vn into 1 plus m plus V1 plus V2 plus Vn minus 1 into n. So n is the disc number. n is the disc number. Okay. So now when I have three discs, if I just have three discs, what is the total voltage capacity? The transmission capacity will be V1 plus V2 plus V3. The total voltage capacity will be V1 plus V2 plus V3. So V1 plus V2 plus V3, I know the expression for V2 and V3. So I get this. So this is the total transmission capacity, the transmission voltage. So I can just write this in another form, all these equations. V1 is equal to V2 by 1 plus M and V1 is also equal to V3 by 1 plus 3M plus M squared and it is also equal to V by from this V by 3 plus 4M plus M squared. So you get the ratio proportions of the different voltages. Clear? So what is the end point of all this story we are discussing? Even though the disks are identical, the voltage across the disks are not the same. So the lowest disk, the one closest to the conductor will have higher voltage as compared to the topmost conduct, uh, topmost disk which is closest to the tower. So the voltage, when will the voltage distribution be equal? When the value of m is equal to 0 which does not have, right? So, you cannot make it as 0. So, there will be some, some particular value. So, though there are ways to reduce this value of m, so that we have a good distribution of the voltage, but still you can't make it 0. So, normally m has a value of around 0.1, say 10%. So, even if m is 0.1, I'll have v1 is equal to 0.293 V, V is the total transmission voltage or 26.3% of the transmission voltage appears across the first disc and V2 is 32.26%. So, 32.26% of the transmission voltage occurs across the second disc and 38.4% across the last disc. That is the one which is connected to the conductor. So, the, so which has a higher voltage? The one which is closest to the conductor. Therefore, that has a higher probability of rupturing. The insulating disc closest to the conductor has a higher probability of rupturing. So, we now define string efficiency. Very simple. Voltage across the string. That is V. Total voltage V1 plus V2 plus V3 divided by N number of discs into voltage across the disc nearest to the conductor. That is the disc which has maximum voltage across it. That will depend on what? That will depend on the value of M. So these are all for values of M is 0.1. They are not always okay. Remember, this 26.3, 32.26, 38.4 are the voltages for a value of m equal to 0.1. So, it will depend on the value of m. So, string efficiency, when I do, I have to take this voltage. The voltage of the disc closest to the conductor. So, for a value of m equal to 0.9, it is 0.384V. So, you get 86.8% efficiency. So, the string efficiency lower means more unequal the voltage distribution. If the voltage distribution is equal, efficiency would be 100%. Efficiency would be 100% because voltage across the string is V and all the disks would have V by N. So, you will get 100%. So, a low efficiency means that unequal distribution of the potential. 
So now let us take some simple examples. So our string has three units and each unit has a capacitance C and the pin to earth capacitance is C by 10 that means M is 0.1. So determine the values of voltage across each of the strings units and the string efficiency if line voltage is 33 kV. Please remember in a three phase system the voltage specified is always the line voltage but the strings are connected in each of the phases. So you have to take the phase to line phase to neutral voltage whenever you line to neutral voltage when you solve for the string voltages. Okay. Therefore I know the formula for m equal to 0.1. So v1 v2 is 1.1 v1 and v3 is this 1.31 v1. Now the total voltage V is 33 kV. This is line to line. So line to neutral voltage is 19.05 kV. Line to neutral voltage is 19.05 kV. So V1 is V that is 19.05 divided by 3 plus 4m plus m square. We have already done this derivation. So V1 is 5.586. Always first calculate V1. Once you know V1, V2 you know is 1.1 times V1 for a value of M equal to 0.1. So that is 6.14. And the third unit from the top is 1.31 V1 that is 7.317 kV. So what is the string efficiency? The total voltage V divided by N into the voltage across the disc closest to the conductor that is V3. So that is 86.86%. 86.86%. Let's take one more example. So find the string efficiency of a 37 kV string which contains 20 insulators. And the potential across the lowest disk is 2 kV. Right. So you can divide by root 3. If you divide by uh, 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 root 3, find the string efficiency of the 37 kV string containing 20 insulators. So I have 37 by 2 into 20. So that is 92.5%. So this could just be a single phase since nothing is mentioned. Now an insulator string of 66 kV line has 4 disks. M is equal to 0 0.1. So find the voltage across the different disks and string efficiency. String efficiency. So you see here V2. I have 4 disks. V2 I already know, V3 I know, V4 I calculate from the formula, I get 1.651 V1. So the transmission voltage is V1 plus V2 plus C, I get 5.061 V1. So the line to neutral voltage is 66 by root 3 kV. So V1 is V by 5.061 I find out V2, V3, V4 and string efficiency is V by 4 into 12.43 by V4. The last disc, the voltage across the last disc. So that is 73.63%. 73.63%. Okay. There's one more nice example here. So a suspension string has three units. Each of them can withstand 11 kV maximum. Okay. So where should this 11 kV restrain? Your last disc should have 11 kV. If you take the first disc as 11 kV, the last will have more so it will rupture. So even whenever you want to design, you should assume that the last disc does not exceed 11 kV. So the capacitance if each joint and the metal work is 20% of the capacitance of each disk. So M is 0.2. So what is the maximum line voltage for which the string can be used and what is the string efficiency? So I have only three units simple. M is 0.2 now. M is 0.2.
you know v2 is v1 into 1 plus 1, 1 plus m, so it is 1.2 v1 and v3 is 1.64 v1. So, your restriction should be on v3 because v3 has the highest voltage. So, v3 should not exceed 11 kV. So, let me assume v3 is 11 kV and then work backwards from that. Then work backwards from that. So, v3 is 11 kV. So, from that, from this equation, I can solve for v1 and v2. So, you see here, v3 is 11 then V2 is 8.04 and V1 is 6.707. You can solve from this. So, if you make this 11, if you make V1 11 and solve for V2 and V3, this will exceed 11. Don't make that mistake. Okay. So, V3, I should restrain it at 11 because none of the disks, the voltage can exceed 11. So, my total transmission voltage is 25.74 into root 3 because I want the line to line voltage. So, it is 44.6 kV and efficiency is the total voltage divided by 3 into voltage across the last disk. It is 78.02 percent. So, we have seen a number of problems. I am sure you can solve it. So, the conclusion of what we discussed is that the voltage distribution is not uniform across the individual disks of a suspension type insulator. Now, let us just see how we can improve the string efficiency using cross arms, guard rings or grading of the insulators. So, long cross arms. I have a long cross arm. So, the efficiency of the string decreases due to unequal voltage distribution. So, greater the value of M, the percentage of the line voltage across the closest to the conductor will be higher. So, to reduce the value of M, I have long cross arms. But then, the length of the cross arm is limited by cost and strength of the supports. So, you just not, can't have very long cross arms. Okay. So, the best possible value of M you can have as I told you is 0.1. You can't have something lesser than that. way is what is called as capacitor grading of units. So, here what we do is, here what we do is, I use disks of different values. I use disks of different values C1, C2, C3, C4, etc. So, that the voltage across each will be the same. The voltage across each will be the same. You got the point? So, in the first case, I had identical strings and because of the capacitance, the voltage distribution was non-uniform. So, now what I try to do, I try to have un unidentical, non-identical disks so that the voltage across them will be the same. This is not actually a very good practice because non-identical disks, if you have, you have manufacturing issues and you can't easily replace one disk with another since they are not identical. Anyway, so, let us see with the capacitance of the topmost unit and the shunt capacitance is MV. So, I am going to work backwards. I am going to assume that the voltage across all of them is V. So, across the first disc, the current I1 will be V omega C and the current through the disc will be MV omega C. And I2 will be I1 plus. So, these node equations do not change. They are all the same. Okay. I will get V omega C into 1 plus 1. So, across the second unit also I have the voltage V. It is I2 by omega C2. So, I have C2 is C into 1 plus M. Similarly, across the third unit I have I2 is equal to 2 V omega C because the voltage, total voltage across that will be 2 times. And I get the equation for the third capacitor. The equations are all very simple. They are all identical to what you wrote in the previous case. Only thing is here I am assuming the voltage to be equal. There we thought the capacitance is to be equal. 
but the capacitance to the from the pin to the tower grounded tower that was considered to be different so if i want to equalize all the voltage across the units the capacitances should be in the ratio of 1 is to 1 plus m is to 1 plus 3m and so on are you understanding what i'm trying to say so if you want equal voltage across the disks then the capacitances should be different so you have to design the disks so that the capacitance between the first second and third unit is 1 1 plus 1 1 plus m 1 plus 3m and so on whereas in the in the first case they were all same c c c so this is not a very good option because the units are all different and so they are not interchangeable this is called as grading of capacitors grading of capacitors the third option available is the use of guard rings a guard ring is a grading ring is a metal ring which is electrically connected to the conductor surrounding the bottom ring of the string insulator so you have a ring conducting ring around the bottom ring so this introduces a capacitance between the metal links and the line conductor and we try to cancel out so you try to cancel out the current drawn by the shunt capacitance and the current drawn by the capacitance due to the guard ring so that the same current flows through the entire disk so this will reduce chances of flashover this will reduce chances of flashover so you see here this is what is done this this is the guard ring guard rings are provided so if c1 c2 c3 be the capacitance between each metal fixture and the guard ring so you design it in such a way that the current drawn by the guard ring and the current drawn by the shunt capacitance cancel each other so that the voltage across each unit is the same so the voltage across c1 is 3v and across nc is v so i have 3v omega c1 is equal to v omega mc and i have c1 is mc by 3 okay and at the node b same same what what the same figure what we used before only thing is you have an additional current flowing through the guard ring wait yeah you see here what we are doing so this is your mutual capacitance or self capacitance i am using identical so they are all c and this is your shunt capacitance and this one c1 c2 c3 is the capacitance because of the guard ring okay so i try to see that this current i1 star and i1 both cancel out each other that's the whole idea of providing the guard ring so what happens whatever current is because of this capacitance will come out here so these cut the current through all this will be the same so that's what we are doing in the derivation so i get c2 is equal to mc and c3 is equal to 3 mc so if i have k units the capacitance between guard ring and the nth unit is given by this k is the number of units and n is the nth unit so that is one way of equalizing the potentials reducing the effect of the shunt capacitance additional cost lastly we use arcing horns i'm sure all of you would have seen like this the arcing horns okay there are again conductors which are used to protect overhead transmission lines against flashover so which can occur because of lightning sudden load variations faults etc so the arcing horns they are projecting conductors you see why they are called as horns these are the arcing horns this is one design one shape this is another another shape so they are projecting conductors used to protect the insulators so whenever there is a breakdown there will be a flash over of the arcs between the arcs which will protect flash over from occurring between the insulator disks so over voltage on transmission line may occur due to various reasons 
So a flash over may take place across the insulator and shatter it. So to prevent this, we use arcing horns. The small gap between the horns ensures that the air between them breaks down whenever the potential gradient exceeds that of the air. The air will break down and a arc is struck, an arc is struck between the horns and this will protect the insulator from the arcing. Okay. So it can be used to provide in remote places for the safety of uh, equipment and arcing horns actually give you more time for the circuit breakers to operate. So fault some time for fault clearance. Okay, one small example. I have a string of five suspension insulators. So I have five discs to be fitted with a guard ring. So the pin to earth capacitance and pin to pin capacitances are all equal to C. Find the values of the line to pin capacitance to have a uniform distribution over the string. So the formula is very simple. Cn is nmc by k minus 1. k is equal to number of units which is 5 and n is the unit number. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. m is given to be 1 because all the capacitances are c. So the ratio will be 1. So just substitute. Here if n is 1, if you substitute, m is anyway 1, so you can remove it. So I have c by 4, 2c by 3, c3, c4. Got it? Something similar. I have a string insulator made up of 5 units. And each unit is rated at 10 kilovolts. So find the maximum voltage, line voltage. If the cell capacitance of the unit is 10 times that of the capacitance between the pin to earth. What is the string efficiency? Okay. So only thing is now I have 5 units. I have the formula. M is 0.1. 10 times. So it is 0.1. So V2, V3, V0, V4 also we have found out. You can find out V5 also using the formula. Okay. Now what is the maximum voltage is 10 kilovolts. So where will you assume 10 kilovolts? Don't make the mistake of assuming V1 to be 10. If you assume V1 to be 10, this will be 11 and it will go on progressively increasing. So V5 will be 21.5. Right? Don't make that assumption. It is not V1. The maximum capacity is 10 kV means the maximum voltage is here. So you should equate V5 to 10. Because V5 is the largest. So that cannot exceed 10. So start backwards. So V5 is 10. From that you can get the value of V1. 10 by 2.15. That is 4.65. Once you have V1, you can find V2, V3, V4. And the total line voltage will be sum of all this. Into root 3 will be the line voltage. So string efficiency will be the line voltage divided by number of units, divided by the voltage across the last unit, 67%. Clear? So be careful when you have the data in this manner. So in the last couple of sessions, we have introduced the topic of transmission and distribution. We saw the different voltage levels used in the transmission and distribution systems. We saw the evolution of the power system and how it moved from DC proposed first by Edison to AC after the invention of the transformer and how we again welcomed back DC into transmission a couple of decades later. And then we saw the different types of distribution systems and also the different protection schemes the materials for the conductors of the conductors, different types of materials and from there we moved on to know about SAG and the importance of SAG and how do we calculate SAG when there are supports at the same levels, 
when there are supports at different levels. We saw what happens to the sag in the presence of ice and wind. And then we saw a lot about insulators, the different types of insulating materials, porcelain, glass, silicone, the disadvantages and advantages of each, the types of insulators, paint type, suspension type, shackle, post, stay and why flashovers occur and the problem of galloping and vibrations in transmission lines. And we also saw that when I have a string or a suspension insulator, the voltage distribution is not uniform and so this can lead to a failure of the insulator closest to the conductor and finally we saw some strategies to improve the string efficiency of the insulators. So now let us take a short quiz. So we have been taking up some quiz questions in between. So let's just take a few here. So this is a recap of what you have learnt. By using a guard ring, the string efficiency is increased, decreased, unaffected or it depends on the voltage level. So what are we doing? Why are we using the guard ring in the first place? Try to recollect. I am doing it to improve the string efficiency. Therefore, the answer would be increased. The string efficiency is increased. So suspension type insulators are used for what level of voltages? So normally we use it for 33 kV and above. Insulators used in dead or sharp ends. I told you whenever there is a dead end or when there is a sharp turning like a river crossing. So this will cause lot of strain on the insulator. So what is that type of insulator called? The name itself I told you it is the strain type. It is a strain type of insulator. For a 66 kV line, how many 11 kV insulators would you use? Now there is one thing in design. Supposing you need to use 5. Instead of 5, if you use 6, no problem. You can even use 10, no problem. But then what happens is the cost is going up unnecessarily. Right? But instead of 5, if you use 4, you have a problem. There is a likelihood or likelihood that the insulator will fail because it cannot withstand. So when you are given such questions, you should choose the one which is closest. Anything higher also is, is permitted. But the good design practice is to choose the one closest. So what happens? I have 66 kV line. So 66 by root 3 is the line to neutral voltage. So I have insulators of 11 kV. So if I do this, I will get 4. So, 4 insulators are sufficient, but you don't have 4 in the answer. Right? 4 is just sufficient. Obviously, I can't use 3. Okay? And I can't use, I can use 6, 5, 12. All are okay. Because all are more than 4. But, as a practice, it is good to use 5. Because, I told you there is no point in unnecessarily using a large more number of strings. So a string insulator has four units. The voltage across bottommost unit is 10 kV and its string efficiency is 90%. Find the total operating voltage. Very simple. The total operating voltage is in the numerator. Efficiency is 0.9. 90% is 0.9. Denominator is what? N into the voltage of the bottommost unit that is n is 4 here n is 4 the voltage of the bottommost unit is 10 
So 40 is the denominator. Numerator by denominator is 0.9. Efficiency is 90%. Therefore, the total voltage has to be, yes, you're right, 36 kV. 0.9 into 40, which is 36 kV. So you see, these are all mental questions. And these sort of questions are what you would make, you get, uh, you can expect even in competitive exams. If the span length is doubled, the sag will, remember the sag is proportional to L squared. So if I double the span length, the sag would obviously be 4 times because it's proportional to L squared, 2 squared is 4. The effect of wind pressure is more predominant on supporting tower, transmission lines, neutral wires and insulators. It is on the towers. So the sag of the conductor of a transmission line is 2.5 meters when the sag length is 250 meters. It, it should not be sag length. It is the span length span length is 250 meters supposing the height of the tower is increased by 2.5 percent what will happen to the sag will it reduce increase or remain unchanged so in the formula for sag the height of the support doesn't come into picture s is equal to w l squared by 8 t so the height of the tower does not affect the sag so by just changing the height the sag will remain unchanged it will not change The effect of temperature rise in lines is to increase the sag and decrease the tension. Decrease sag and increase the tension. Increase both, decrease both. Always remember, you cannot have both. If there is high tension, it will be low sag, low tension, high sag. So when temperature occurs, what happens? It will heat the conductors. So sag will be more and tension will be less. So, it is to increase the sag and decrease the tension. The sag of a line is least affected by weight of the conductor, current through the conductor, atmospheric temperature and ice deposition on conductor. What would the answer be? Current through the conductor. Okay. Because you know the weight affects, atmospheric temperature also affects, ice deposition affects. So the current through the conductor does affect, not that it doesn't affect because the conductors get heated up and they will tend to sag. So the word is the least affected. So this effect is lesser than the other three effects. What is the shape that is attained by conductors if suspended from the same height? I told you the shape is called as a catenary like a, you know this curve that curve is called as a catenary what is the minimum safety factor two minimum safety factor we use is two more than two if you use the cost will go up so even two is sufficient so with this i'm sure uh, you have got a fairly good introduction to different aspects of transmission and distribution in the power systems. So, thank you all for watching this module and series of my lectures.